Hello and welcome all, this is Heir of Carthage, and we are back in our Seleucid campaign, where we're going to be trying to not only re-establish the legacy of Alexander, but create a new one by pushing it further west than Alexander ever controlled, and by now many of you are familiar with the premise. If you are not, I suggest you go back and watch earlier episodes, I have them all on a playlist, and I think you will thoroughly enjoy it. When we last left, um, we were busy with Hannibal, he had just captured Ptolemaeus Theron and is continuing to take away lands from the Kush. Um, once we get everything taken away from Kush, um, he will be able to, I think, uh, bounce a little further west. For the time being, I'm not sure whether I'm going to attack Cyrenaica, but I definitely want to take Hannibal um, to Greece before jumping back down into North Africa, going back through Carthage, bouncing over to Sicily, taking Sicily, and then invade Rome from the south. Um, so do it a little bit different than Hannibal did last time, and then the trip through Carthage is maybe a little bit of revenge and setting things straight, since Carthage never really fully supported Hannibal the way they should have. Sometimes they did, most of the time they did not. It ended up being part of the reasons that cost him victory, ultimately, in the Second Punic War. Not all of the reason, but part of it. And um, anyway, let's continue things here. I've, I've My satrapies are at war. I've been moving an army in uh, to support them, and that army is drawing near. Uh, you can see it here. I've got it temporarily into an ambush stance so as to not tip off a Parthaba here that we are near and that we're going to be assaulting them. So and that we will do. Uh, I'm going to get in and take them out, and we're going to start retaking some of our lands. And uh, we are at war with Bactria. Right, Bactria in the last episode decided to unleash on us. Now, speaking of the last episode, you all continue to be absolutely amazing with the support of these videos, and all I can ask is please keep it up. I have been spending hours a day for days responding to hundreds of comments because of the overwhelming outreach on these videos. And so you might be saying, Air, what does it matter if we leave a comment? Well, as I explained in previous videos, when you leave a comment and you like the video, and, and I'm asking all of you, if you enjoy this series, like, for instance, we had about 7,000 views on the last video, and don't get me wrong, I'm thankful for it. We had about 661 likes, which was really great, somewhere in that neighborhood. If that was 7,000 likes for the people who had watched it, then that video would have gotten showed to tens of thousands of more people, and our views probably would have been up near 20,000. Well, it's not my job to get you views. You're right, it isn't, and you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, if you like this content, and you want to see more of it, uh, that's the way you can do it. It's stupid. That's just the way the YouTube algorithm works, right? All I want them to do is to show my videos to my subscribers. They don't do this consistently. And so that's why I have to ask you all to help me. And you've been doing a fantastic job. Again, if you're enjoying what you're watching, take a second, comment, hit that like button. It really does make a huge difference and will ultimately result in you getting more content like this. Anyway, I have talked about that enough. I have to mention it every episode. I don't like it. I don't want to do it, but again, YouTube kind of forces my hand, and I get left without a lot of options. Let's end our turn, though, and uh, kind of get things... Oh, speaking of, let's go into the political screen. I've been getting lots of great comments. Speaking of the comments, the people who are taking the time to comment, I've been getting a lot of fantastic comments from people, and I really appreciate them. They have been very helpful. Um, in, in helping me decide things that we need to do. So I did try to secure some loyalty um, on some of these factions, but there are other people mentioning to me the entice thing. So for instance, um, they mentioned the entice... Uh, is it spread rumor? Send diplomat, send emissary. Where was the entice? Force, usurp, educate... That's somewhere here. Flirt, do a favor, praise, insult, provoke, send a gift, assassinate, spread rumors, gather support, entice. So it's this one. Persuade a member of another party to join your cause. Halves the target's gravitas. Minus eight loyalty for the target party for eight turns. Um, so see, like, she doesn't have um, a valid target. Requires two more cunning... Anyway, so we don't have someone, apparently, that we can try and do this against. We have other nobles, petitions, folks that we could adopt into our family. Let's take a look at our family here. 
And let's take a look at what we can do. Antiochus II, for instance. It was him as a politician. And he can entice. I know that we can send, so like, for instance, we could send this guy, um, send as a diplomat, and it'll gain us some loyalty for his party. Um, it may give them more influence for the time being, but like, for instance, we could send him as a diplomat, and we can choose a place to send him as a diplomat. Um, let's send him to uh, someone who likes us, you know. Let's send him to uh, Media. There we go. We have sent him as a diplomat. And we'll see how that works out. I'm going to try, because basically we need to keep the loyalty of Hannibal's party high. Uh, I mean, that's something that I just, I need to take care of. So I'm, I'm trying to learn more about this stuff. Uh, or whoops, I think I send this guy instead of this guy. We'll send him too, because this I think will grab us some extra loyalty. We might be able to prom secure promotion for Hannibal too, which will make him stronger. Um... It makes his upkeep lower. It's going to give him more influence as well. But, you know, it is something that I'm willing to put up with. So let's go ahead and get a promotion for Hannibal. Again, all this I'm hoping will help improve the loyalty uh, of the parties. It doesn't have anybody else I can send as a diplomat from these parties for some reason. Yeah, this guy we can. Politician at Antioch. So let's send him as a diplomat again. Try and just get some better loyalty. I think we sent the one to Media. Let's send this guy to uh, Fran Frangiana, or however you say this. There we go. So we've got a couple of guys sent out as diplomats. It's improving the loyalty. May make some changes, you know, as we go on. If there's any of these that impact loyalty? Probably not. No, nope. these all look like things that are not really going to help me a lot at the moment. But anyway, there we go. So a couple things we, we could do that might help us out. This guy could also be sent out on a mission, so let's send him out as a diplomat. Pick someone else who kind of likes us here, like Persia. There we go. So that'll help get slightly better loyalty for the time being for those parties. We'll deal with any other issues that pop up later, because there may be other repercussions. Uh, we finished off the Galatians. Um, Antiochus' army needs to rest, essentially. Our navy is now somewhat capable, and someone told me that it can sail up the Nile, and I think it can up to a point. I think it can sail up to that point in the Nile, but I don't... Can it keep going? No. What the heck? They can march inland? What is this? Yeah, it's getting ready to say. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so yeah, it could have supported us uh, through some of these, but uh, I can't sail any further up the Nile at this point, so I can't send it um, for further support but, uh, support, but thank you for someone also pointing that out in the comments. Really appreciate you all doing that for me. Um, Antiochus has a skill point that we need to assign. We've been making him a better commander, so stuff that's giving him way more authority, basically bolstering the morale, recruitment costs, the kind of stuff you'd expect from a king. Uh, you know, giving that king that super high authority rating, you can see it here. So just kind of role-playing a little there. Hopefully it doesn't have any negative impacts to us, because like I said, I don't perfectly understand all of these traits and, and stuff like that, but uh, just doing my best to role-play with it a little. If we make mistakes, which I'm sure we will, it'll only create um, some nonsense and hopefully in the end maybe some fun for us. But the biggest thing now is that I can't have Hannibal rebelling against my faction and losing him because that's that's the entire campaign, right? <laughs> We can't afford that because Hannibal is like a big key to this campaign. So I've got to do everything I can to make sure he can't leave my party. I think eventually we might be able to have people. Uh, oh, whoops. Generous uh, tribute. So let's reread these again. All right. So we got a tribute from our mission to Media, and we got a tribute from. Rangiana or whatever, and got a tribute um, from Persia as well. So that's kind of cool. Oh my gosh, man! Yeah, we did get a generous tribute. Holy crap! Pulled in some, uh, pulled in some cash off that. So that ended up working out. 
And uh, the loyalty is back down again. I wonder if it's because we're able to do the secure loyalty thing again. It is. So let's go ahead and run a secure loyalty with these generous tributes that we just picked up. Alright, so that will help give us pretty good party loyalty for the next few turns here. Let's go back in here to characters. Yeah, so they, we've got pretty good loyalty now. It's, it's even on the positive side uh, for these families. We can now send them on yet more missions. Let's see what some of these other ones are. Send this politician to a troublesome province. Now see, it gives these characters gravitas, which is going to make them more influential which ultimately does probably hurt us here in terms of um, how influential our own faction is. So right now, things are looking fairly stable. Uh, so I'm not going to get too much into... Uh... Curious, though, the send a gift. Send a gift to a loyal party to further improve relations. So we can send gifts to loyal parties... Send an emissary to help them with their basic necessities. So these are just different... Wait a minute. I don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to back out of that for now. I really want to do the entice thing. But... Um, as the target's... Requires two more cunning than the target's authority. The characters... When a character's in command, they can't do that. So if I look at, for instance, um, Antiochus II here, he cannot be in command, and he needs to have more cunning than Hannibal does, like two more cunning than Hannibal. So Hannibal has authority, so essentially, like for instance, if we could get Antiochus have a cunning of, um, that'd be seven, he would be able to work on the enticing of Hannibal, like trying to pull him into our party. So we could look at is there anything here that would give me cunning. Public order, morale, public order. Nope, just authority and stuff here for our character as far as these things go. Um, we probably do want to seek a spouse for Antiochus though, right? Marriage is arranged. And then we've got Seleucus here. And let's see what he's up to right now. He's the heir. And I would think we want to seek a spouse for him as well. Wonder... Hannibal... How do we tell whether they are married? I wonder if we could marry him off. I uh, seek divorce, usurp legacy, educate, declare heir. Yeah, I don't know exactly how we could have tried to maybe marry him off to one of our daughters. Like, so for instance, can we marry Hannibal to one of our daughters? Try and, like, create it. Um, it just says seek spouse. Um, let's see, what is the age on this character? For the ages. 25? She is 25. Probably ought to just seek a spouse here to get our family all married up. This character's 18, so we could probably do the seek spouse as well. And if I'm making mistakes here, let me know about it. <laughs> let me know about it. But uh, yeah, there we go, politician. So now we've got even more characters we can mess with here. Family leader. Hannibal's been promoted. Party loyalty's looking good. I'm looking at the politics screen. Like, I don't see any big chance for a party to secede. Go to our faction summary. Our Imperium is at level 5 here. Which increase, you know, as it goes up, it's going to incre increase all of our political action cost upkeep, other stuff like that, and it hurts the loyalty of other political parties as we grow. But um, it's okay. I think I think things are 
we're at least trying to put some balance to it here. At least trying. Our food situation is now absolutely excellent because of the uh, captures that we have made in uh, Egyptus. I'm going to put all that to use, try and make us more money. We're going to need ever more money to support ourselves. We don't have a lot more cash uh, at the end of this turn. There is some raiding going on by the Spearmen, who are the leftover Galatians. The They're going to attempt Waiting to flee wars. and be annoying. All right. Did the Galatians have a lady leaving their, uh, leading their army? They may have. Couldn't tell there. Um, I'm gonna kill the captives because I don't want any Galatians still running around. I'm rather done with them. I need this army to uh, to go help with my satrapy wars anyway. There is a very small Galatian force here to the Howling Wolves that is approaching uh, Ankara. But um, although my garrison is bad, it should be able to handle uh, what they're throwing at me. So I think we're safe from that perspective. Let's take uh, Hannibal's army and uh, get on the move again. We've got Moreau over here as our next target. I'm going to stop just inside friendly territory here so that I can keep his army replenishing before we attack Ramo, uh, or Moreau, sorry, Ramo, <laughs> Moreau. All right, I need to fix the uh, the buildings here and I'll do that on the next turn as well. So then I'll have a little more cash in hand. Let's go ahead and end our turn here. Well, that was good. The political missions were at least temporarily successful and seemed to have had positive effects. Oh, great. They hired an absolute crapload of mercenaries because, of course, the Galatians still have money. I mean, CA, please, the fact that a faction with literally one unit left to its name had enough money to hire all these mercenaries. Sure. This is really quite annoying stuff. All right, now I'm going to have to bring my army back and retake Ankyra. Because the Galatians were allowed a whole bunch of money that they couldn't possibly have had. Especially considering the beating that I just handed them and all the troops that they had to raise and the fact that they haven't owned hardly any provinces for multiple turns on it. Look at this. My allies rushing to Ankyra to try and get to it before I can take it. This is why sometimes having all the satrapies is kind of annoying and they likely will get there before I do. I'm going to force march as quick as I can over here. I... If this settlement ends up in the hands of my satrapy, I'm going to be really upset about it. Because of the way the AI kind of like cheated its way out of here. It's, it's really quite irritating. Civil settlement. Of course, I cannot attack on this turn, and I'm pretty sure that what's going to happen is the Sardes will bring this army over. I wonder if we can somehow get Sardes off of here. I always hit the wrong buttons in here. Let's go into the diplomacy. I wish, I mean, because it is my satrapy, and I like the idea of the welcome, satrapy, but... Welcome. In a spirit of Olympian hospitality, I welcome you and will listen with I wish there was a way I could tell them, like, hey, lay off, you know? Like, go here. Like, here, I'll, I'll give them a war coordination target. Actually, I can't. So, see, they're at war with Tylus. But I can't give them a war coordination target with them. I could tell them to attack there, but that's not what I want them to do. Uh, maybe I can... How come I can't move the screen? Okay, there we go. There. Come attack back here. Like, ignore what you're doing. And go somewhere where you'll be useful, please. Like, just go after the war coordination target. That, that's what I'm asking you to do. I have opportunity to build 
some new stuff here at CD. All right. And let's check our army outside Cherax here, where we were laying an ambush. Let's move forward and assess the situation. Yep, Parthava marched on and did not leave an army to garrison. And so now I'm going to get to take their settlement. And I'm going to actually, like, I don't want to fight this one, but I'm going to fight it because the auto resolve is very poor in the way that it treats me. And I do not want high army losses because I want to stay on the move with this army. It's in fact rather important that we do. So I'm going to be rather insistent that we um, fight this ourselves as much as I hate the waste of time. All right, let's start the battle here. As a waste of time it is, uh, the auto resolve should be able to easily the uh, beating that my forces give Parthavans here. Um, all right, let's set up the main infantry force, skirmishers up front, and horse behind. This is our army that has the Hellenic cataphracts, which is cool. All right, so let's move up. I don't know where they're going to land those ships. Keep an eye on it. Can't tell if they're going to land them over here and disembark there. I want I want my cavalry to be ready to go kill the units coming off those ships near immediately. I'm going to run my cavalry that way. Yeah, they are going to land there, so let's group my cavalry. Cavalry on the move. Right, I'm going to start tearing down some of their units here. I do have a horse skirmisher over here that I would rather not get tangled up with. I wonder if we can catch it, though, with my light cavalry. Possibly. I'll give some quick chase to it and see what we uh, get lucky with. We're going to take a javelin volley, which is unpleasant, but if we can catch them in melee... Oh my gosh, they got a second volley off. Holy crap, they killed almost 20 of my light horse in two fast volleys there. Okay, we are absolutely annihilating the enemy. And our light horse is destroying the horse skirmisher in melee, which is really fantastic. There's a Thurios, uh, Thurios spear, sorry, I'm mispron thoroughly mispronouncing Thurios spear. I'm gonna try some cycle charges here. We did get a very, very good charge on that Thurios spear. It was not braced. Typically, Thurio Spears are in the process of uh, throwing their javelins, <clears throat> which is helpful against cavalry, but it also does not allow them to brace when you're in a fire at will, if I remember right. I believe that it uh, takes away bracing. Alright, so at this point, our light cavalry should be able to... I'm going to take all my melee infantry and move towards the capture point. Alright, losses are pretty moderate. A few losses with my cavalry, but nothing we shouldn't be able to recover from re relatively quick. I'm going to do a quick cycle charge with my general. Let my citizen cavalry hold the fight for a moment. And that Persian cavalry just got a very nice charge on that side. Oh, yep. Enemy's breaking here. The enemy general is dead. Excellent. Excellent news for us. All their naval reinforcements were defeated rather summarily. And uh, we were able to catch and kill their skirmishers there with very few losses, so not bad. Not bad. 
pretty pretty uh pretty low losses all things considered our cavalry was able to crush their reinforcing naval units that were disembarking So Cherax will now be back under our control, and this army will be able to continue its march eastward. It wouldn't hurt me to be able to get some better recruiting uh, out on this side of my empire, but at the moment... So this one does have the same... Um, it should still be under the same cultural influence. This is another comment, which thank you for the comments, by the way. If it, it, People were saying that if it's a different cultural influence, we should raise it. Um, and then if it's not, we should occupy it. So this one, I think, should still be under our cultural influence, even though some of the buildings may have started to be switched around here. Uh, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. <laughs> this doesn't... This would be a good place for me to set up a recruiting center back east. I'm going to go ahead and tear that down because I just don't need it here at the moment, and I'll build a temple... Instead, I need to remember to put a building here, though, or else I may end up with my first patchy factories of the campaign. I don't have enough money to upgrade all the weapons on these units, so I cannot do that at the moment. And I cannot further move Antiochus on this turn. We're going to just have to hope Sardes doesn't steal our own province out from under our nose. And uh, Hannibal is does have movement points and is ready to uh, make a move against... Kush at Moreau. And they do not have much holdout time here, nor do I think their army is very capable, so we're just going to continue the siege and um, siege out the Kush. And then I'll probably just crush Axum at the same time because those guys will just turn against us at some point. Um, so I don't want that. Alright, I do believe it is time for us to end a turn have an unassigned skill to Seleucus, um, who is our heir. I believe we're going to find him in the politics screen here. Or characters, I should say. Yeah, here he is. We want to increase cunning on someone so that we can get them to entice Hannibal. And let's remember that the enticing thing here says that the... Um, Oh, uh, hang on, it says, uh, disable this character is currently in command. Seleucus is in command. I did not know that. Where is he in command at? Oh, he's in command of Pericles Pride. Okay, my bad, my bad. I've got someone else in mind. So, my mistake. My mistake. Um, in that case, let's just kind of remind ourselves what's down these trees. There's Zeal, which is kind of interesting. Protects him from characters. More cultural conversion. Morale when defending. Melee attack skill for all units. I mean, that's actually kind of cool. During offensive battles. I kind of like that. That might be kind of fun. I kind of like this. Let's do the zeal tree. With Seleucus. Seleucus, however we're going to say his name here. Scenary hiring units. There we go. Alright. Do some stuff to bolster his authority. There is no... No upgrades for his army. I believe now we can end our turn. See what happens with Sardes. Hopefully they don't take my settlement. Look at this crap! All because CA decided that... Yeah, we, this faction definitely has enough money to hire all these mercenaries despite having zero provinces, despite having had to rebuild about five or six armies. It shows you the uh, monetize, uh, money cheats that the AI gets privileged to. All right, so um, the Kush are gonna come out and defend themselves rather than be sieged to death. So I like to see that. I like that initiative. Gives Hannibal a chance to uh, get a battlefield presence in this episode as well, which I also appreciate. But anyway, yeah, I'd love the tips coming in on the politics. Please keep the tips coming. This helps me learn this stuff. And it also proves to you that, yes, I am reading all your comments. 
Era, you didn't do what I said in my comment. Okay, I may not have followed every comment or done it all perfectly, but I am reading all your comments. And um, I really appreciate those. Um, obviously, I appreciate all of them, whether they're just there for support. Some people are literally just putting comment for the algorithm. That's totally fine. <laughs> that's, it's helpful. I, you'd be like, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. But that's just the way that YouTube works, and there's very little that I can do about it. So uh, I'm not saying that it makes a lot of sense that that's the way that YouTube works, but that's the way that YouTube works. So um, anyway, we get stuck with it. But yeah, uh, but I also very much love the comments that are giving me some advice on how to do things in the game. And not every comment has to do that. So again, don't think, well, I don't know what to tell her what to Enemy do, so I have nothing to say. Approaching. You can say anything. You can literally go down there and just say comment. I've had that. And again, I know that sounds stupid, but it helps. <laughs> and it's if it sounds stupid, it's because it is stupid. But again, Our hidden units it helps. Alright, here comes the AI suicide charge. Our hidden units have been discovered. Alright, so the AI will often suicide its cavalry headlong into your units, or into the unit it thinks it can cause the most damage to. And um, this it's not gonna go well for them. <laughs> When I said that the AI is suicide charging, they uh, they most definitely are. Alright, so the suicidal tendencies of the AI once again failed to pay off. Uh, the only thing it did manage to do was get my pikes slightly out of alignment. I'll have to click attack orders with my pikes, which is actually less effective than having them stand still and just prepare for charges. Alright, here's more cavalry inbound on this flank. And we have a general here, a Kushite guard. Charges set up here. My lord. The men are wavering. Where are men wavering? Okay, yeah, just uh, the Hillman unit, so I'm not surprised. They got hit by a Kushite royal guard. Orders, my lord. I'm gonna bring this cavalry back and let my hoplites chase that Ethiopian cavalry. Is this a slave slinger? Ignore the slingers, just get over here. All right, enemy general should be dead or near it. I can now deal with the slingers. We're gonna crush the infantry. My general, let's keep him moving. Surprised there hasn't been a full-on chain route already. Gotta be very near it. Awaiting orders. Elephants. Forward. Right, let's get our slingers up here. I'm gonna reposition my pikes. You ready for the incoming infantry assault? I need to fall back a little bit with some of these Persian hoplites. Yay. I got outmaneuvered by this Ethiopian cavalry. Reposition. Let's get our general back a little bit because he's at risk of javelin volleys to the face. A move up where I can support against the enemy archers. Killing tribesmen. Pull these guys back in. And this is looking quite, quite good. Let's keep our general moving. This is a shameful 
I'm gonna try and plow through these leopard warriors. We want to keep them moving. That's how our elephants get more points. Kills. Push. Put it on an enemy unit. Okay, yeah. One of our units has gone berserk. Ah! They managed to berserk our general with a single volley off the tribesmen, of course. But fortunately, our elephants are berserking into said tribesmen. And repaying their treacherous javelin volleys. Right, I just killed off a whole bunch of their skirmishers. This battle's near over. As soon as I get my elephants back under control. I'm sure we don't end up with any damage, but they berserked my elephants, but didn't really end up causing a whole ton of damage. So there we go. It's in the battle. Very successful battle. Which is going to leave Hannibal in control of Moreau with only the loss of Hillman, really. We didn't suffer heavy losses anywhere else, but I mean, Hillman are just... They are awful. They're some of the worst infantry. Like, they are really and truly awful. Release the captives, I guess, for the moment, because I want the extra cash. I guess I could have killed them, seeing as that we're going to just have to fight them all in the siege anyway, but they're about to be sieged out, and we're going to take control of the settlement regardless, so I'm not really concerned about, I guess, whether we release them or not at the moment. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe they'll have a small army left because I released them. I don't know that Sardes got a hold of any of our stuff. Horsemen, cavalry recruitment, horsemanship. All right, we are going to raise the settlement because it is a different culture. Now we've got Moreau. We're going to convert it now and start to build what we want here. That is what I want at the moment, and I need to convert this other one. Trading I'm going to be very short on money, but um, tear that down. I don't know what this one is. Uh, the Hunter's Trading Post. Let's go ahead and tear it down and we'll build our own on the next turn. We can now do some more research. We finished the previous one. Proof ramming looks pretty good. It's going to make our ships quite a lot stronger. And uh, then we can maybe do Royal Stables next. We do want strong ships. I don't have any more money for this turn end. It looks like we can just kind of waltz in. Now, if the AI's garrison here, see how quickly they almost have full strength garrison? Uh, meaning that their unit, like it's not a full strength as and it has a lot of units, but strength in terms of like the uh, the units are almost full health. The, AI, uh, the player doesn't usually get such a benefit. Said uh, the type of cheats. I had someone saying to me in a comment too, and, and it's fair, they can leave the comment. I'm not mad about it, I'm just, I'm just going to answer the comment. And they're like, well, if you complain about some of these things in this game, why are you playing it? Well, just because I complain about a few things in a game doesn't mean that I don't like said game. Look at this, we're gonna lose control of Iconium, uh, Iconium too, because uh, Pontus is gonna try and get in there and take it. I don't really have any say over Pontus, they're not a faction. It is uh, under my boot at the moment. Enter, friend, and speak. We surely have much to discuss, and perhaps much to agree. Trade agreement set up with them for now, so I, I may accept. I may not control that settlement, agreement. which is frustrating. But um, you know, we'll just have to we'll have to deal with it. Welcome. Honored emissary. Speak. I'd like to get and trade agreements. With my as we many factions as no we can. More. Your proposal. Welcome, friend. Let us come. I yeah, accept. So there's some trade when agreements we're gonna open. We have one with they Armenia. I cannot. Or we have one with Cappadocia. They slit each other's throats. All right. There we go. Got some extra trade agreements. That's going to give us some extra cash each turn. So, all good news. 
Oh, I was worried about having Apache factory somewhere, was I not? I could end up with it regardless. Could just leave that small city undone, and that'll give me a little extra money, because I gotta come back here to Cherax and try and... I, I'm, I know some of you all want to see the Apache factories, and that's pretty hilarious, and I understand why you enjoy that, but... I don't want to create any Apache factories at the moment, because it's not particularly healthy for my uh, my war effort. For how much it cost to upgrade? That cost 4,000. All right, well... Are we in range of Sousa? We are not. I would like to be. I'm gonna make a move towards Sousa. Cherax ought to be fairly stable. And uh, we might be able to get our hands on Persis here. And we're gonna have to go, like I said, push back here where we are definitely starting to lose to our, um, our enemies over here in the Satrapy Wars, as we will call it. Hey, thanks for raiding my territory there. That's your command. Be nice if you would change your attitude. I don't know whether Pontus will make a shot at Galatia here or not. If they don't, it'll be great because then I get my stuff back. We'll see. All right, for Antiochus, he's got an army tradition here. Charge bonus and campaign movement range. That sounds good. I want all the campaign movement range I can get. Antiochus uh, is actually slightly higher rank here. So Glacia, yeah, hey, give us a peace offer. treaty. Uh, how about no? How about a big fat screw you? Like, look at him, just pushing further in here. I'm gonna draw the line here and fight. My army isn't good, but I'm gonna try and put together some type of defense. I've got these Peltists. I might be able to mow down their general, and then that just leaves them with Hillmen. I've got slingers and stuff as well, so I'm going to try and put an end to this nonsense. The Galatians, who have no money, have no hope, but continue to get to operate because of the basically free cheese that was handed to them by <laughs> Creative Assembly as part of not being able to actually create a difficult opponent for you, but only being able to feed an opponent unfair resources. Um, so I'm going to take my pike, uh, my pike unit here. I'm going to spread them out where they can kind of hold this, and I'll put my Eastern Spear in front of them to try and, like, absorb any um, missiles that get shot at me, at least in the temporary. And then I'm going to take my Slingers, and I'm going to put them over here and work them with these Peltists and see if we can cause a ton of damage to the enemy units. Alright, we got pikes down over here. They do have eastern javelin men. So see, that's why I have my, my spearmen in front. I don't want the javelins to shoot at my pikes. I need them to waste their ammunition elsewhere. So if I can combine forces with these peltists and my slingers and take out the enemy noble horse, which I think we can... Then that would leave my skirmishers at a pretty nice advantage. That is a Cappadocian cavalry as well, so that is also a fairly dangerous unit. Let's see where the AI is going to go with their horse units. We want to kill off their horse units because then that'll basically give me the ability to uh, to pick at them freely. Go square here. Really get braced up. The cavalry runs back here for my peltist. I'll slay them with the peltist. If they charge in, then I'll move my peltist forward and kill them while they're charging in. Use a. Uh, oh, they're trying to capture my. Give it to him, boys. Beat him the javelins. Alright, so the Cappadocian Cavalry is going to eat a very healthy dose of javelins. They will get a good charge in, because the AI always does. But we'll kill them quickly. And that'll be one Cavalry unit out of our way. All 
Alright, so that Cappadocian cavalry is going to get eaten up. It's down to four, one. It's going to die all the way before it routes. Okay, fine with me. Now we're going to go for the, uh, the noble cavalry. Oh crap, we have Eastern Javelin minute in. On the way. Alright, good, we're going to get their general here. I gotta back up from their eastern javelin then and lay down some sling fire. Hurry, kill their general. We have to kill their general. We're getting hit by javelins over here. I've gotta. Oh my gosh, they've already taken out like 70 units in my my general because they're picking at me. Move back. Okay, so this is not going according to plan. We did kill the enemy general, so that is definitely part of the plan. Turn around, you idiot. My general is now trapped in here and just taking a hail of javelins. And I don't know that there's anywhere I can properly hide from them. Crap, I'm about to get cut over. Alright, I blew it. So, I had an opportunity to win this, and I blew it, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've won it. Way to go, Air. That wasn't a victory point, so I shouldn't have even dealt with guarding it. I should have just played smarter, and I didn't, so... Alright, well, we've lost this one because I'm Our men flee the ignorant field of battle. This is a shameful and bad. <laughs> so I'll give them that one. And unfortunately, since I killed their general, now they're going to get a brand new one. <laughs> and they'll have a full general unit of some sort. So that is irritating. And since they moved on, I don't know whether Pontus came first or whether Pontus comes after Galatia. It looks like Pontus came first, did not attack Iconium. That's good news for me, because it means I can take Iconium for my own, and now I'm going to have to move to Sea Day. Hannibal's Revenge is being attacked. Getting out of desperation here at Moreau. Auto resolve. I'm probably gonna take some losses here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quick save it, but I, I really just don't want to fight this. This is pointless to fight, and I don't want to waste my time. Though I may be making a big mistake. So that's why I did an auto save here, just in case it kills off my elephants or something. Okay, I, whatever. It's not good, but it's it's tolerable. We can we can live. We can live. Right, the turn in, so Sardes is trying to go take my territory, and they'll likely get to the next one before me. Migration minus 50%, public order penalties, cultural suppression. I'm gonna do the subjugation, try and spread. Kush got destroyed. See, Sardes is trying to get to my settlements. And I cannot keep moving after I take this settlement. I get stuck, unfortunately, so I can't. Um, I could look at one other option here real quick. Let's go ahead and occupy. Commander. Is that a coastal settlement? Who it is, thank goodness. But I can't quite reach it in one turn. Dang it. I don't know whether Sardes can get to it before me or whether they will try because the Galatians do have some army, but if I would have been smarter here, I could have moved my fleet up, gotten to it quicker, so... Another unfortunate downside for me. Um, we do have some cash. Let's take a look at where we want to spend it. There's some rogue rebels here already. Oh, that didn't take long. Uh, they're going to kill my cavalry. Which I would rather not happen. So I'm going to get forced to fight a battle here. And I really don't want to. But 
I'm gonna have to fight this or else they're gonna kill off my Persian cavalry almost as assuredly. And my Persian cavalry have been upgraded, that's why I don't want them to be dead. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna have to fight this one. Waste of time, but we'll fight it. My skirmishers should be able to kill off these rebels mostly single-handedly. I'll just use my Persian hoplites to support my skirmishers and we'll just finish this battle relatively quick. Start our deployment. Let's deploy everything back here. Except for Persian hoplites and I'll put like a general and stuff here just in case I suddenly need some mobility, but this is gonna be just fine right here. It's absolutely and utterly insane that the auto-resolve is this bad that forced you to do this. And like I said, I could look for an auto-resolve mod that helps with this and it probably exists. What I'm worried about is that whether it would interfere with my um, guaranteed major faction empires because that one is changing auto-resolve chances for major factions. Um, and I don't want to screw that up because that guaranteed major faction empires is really the only hope um, that we have. And some people may think, oh, that means Air is definitely going to get to fight Rome. <laughs> Maybe not, because remember that it, it guarantees we're going to have major faction empires. What it does not guarantee is that which empires that will be. So what I mean by that is it is very possible that Rome gets killed by another major faction empire like the Arverni. <laughs> Um, so, the Arverni, for instance, may destroy Rome. Brace up for a charge here. The enemy general is dead. Indeed, he is. Okay, now I can just get my skirmishers to lay off. And we just wrap this up real quick while my Persian Hoplites hold line. We get lined up for a really nice downhill rear charge here. I'm gonna lower their bracing, inspire my general, charge in, stampede. And just keep pulling straight through the enemy line here. Alright, there we go. Four Strouts in battle. And the Moreau Rebels are dead. Means we can conf uh, continue to try and satiate the uh, bad public order in this area. It looks like we are probably down a crappy Hillman unit. I have no interest in Hillman. Let's get back into the settlement to help calm it. We need to convert the city here. I don't want to end up with patchy factories, so we've got some work to do here at Ptolemaeus Theron. And I know that I have a lot of food, but I want a lot of food so that I can run a ton of upgrades on other other on other stuff. Other other stuff. Yeah. Let me talk. Amazing. Um, so here, I want to go ahead and put in a skirmisher camp as well. This will give me some very nice military recruiting within Egypt. And when I go up to Satrap Stables, we get Tarantine Cavalry and Indian War Elephants. That's on top of some already okay cavalry. But uh, once we finish our research coming up soon, we should get access to uh, better cavalry even still. Which I'm very much excited for. Let's go ahead and try and... You know what? We already have this um, Grove of Nymphus here that's helping Cherax. Should just put something else here. Both from Culture, Helps the Bread and Games Edict, Axe Harvesting Edict. I almost wonder whether we need this at all. I think I'm going to switch this one for the yellow building chain. Because we're getting a lot of cultural influence, we really just want the extra public order, but then we could get some nice money from the uh, the yellow chain. 
Okay, let's um go ahead and take Sousa. So Parthava is gonna lose some more territory while I continue to gain. Pericles' pride has leveled up. Ready for battle. I do not have the cash to fully upgrade their weapons, so I'm not going to deal with it right now. I'm going to make them better at sieging. I'm going to continue down this tree. Um, let's do that. And let's get... Waiting on a turn-end, waiting on a turn-end. Ah, Patchy Factory! Did I make this Patchy Factory? Increase in rank. It may have been left from the Gauls. I don't know whether I made it or whether they did. But we'll tear it down regardless. Food back here, and then I'll put the yellow building tree in there. Our fleet's on the way to confront the Gauls. Hopefully we'll get some of our first action out of the fleet. And we're pretty low on cash from here on out. Hannibal's got to just kind of camp here until we can get Moreau under better management. So let's take a look at our situation here. Yeah, good loyalty still. Factions, so nothing to freak out over at the moment, I don't think. Doesn't appear to be at any high risk of civil war or anything else going, so I'm going to... I'm going to sit back and relax and assume everything's safe, which means nothing could possibly go wrong, right? Uh, we can issue an edict. We'll look at our edicts. I about half wonder if I want to do some tax harvesting edicts across our highest earning ones. Patea currently has a bread and games edict, which it no longer needs, so I think I'm going to switch that one over to a tax harvesting. Egyptus has a bread and games edict. It may need, as we continue to make upgrades to some of these um, different buildings here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one intact for now. Cannot issue an edict here. Where can I issue the edicts? Not sure I control anything entirely. Yeah. It, it may just be that we have an additional edict, but we don't have the province to, um, to enact it in. I could be missing something, but... I mean, there we can issue an edict, and I have. Here I can issue an edict, and I already have. Oh, no, here we go. We do not have one in Alexandria for some reason. Let's do bread and games. There we go. Alright, so I think that solves it, but we still have the skill point with Hannibal. Let's zoom to his army. And we can go to Tactician, which makes him now plus 24% campaign movement range. Inspire and Rally. Let's go do that. So Hannibal now has a very high cunning. So I think that makes sense in role-playing his character. Now we're ready to end our turn. We're just about done with this episode even. I feel like we've made some progress, hopefully for the good. Look at them still just running to my other settlements. It is unreal what the AI will do here. Trying to extinct Galatia and they just get a single army and as long as they can stay one turn in front of you, they're good to go. We can no longer trade with one of our satrapies, that is unfortunate. But expected with the wars that we're having back there. I'm going to take Sea Day with my fleet. Alright, that is good news. Then my fleet will now have Sea Day guarded, and the Gauls won't be, or the Galatians won't be able to get past me. 
And this army can march to Tarsus. Not all in one turn. Well, yeah, we can, I think, if we do the forced march. Yep, there we go. So now I've got the Galatians trapped, and all it cost me was a little trespassing against Pontus, which I will take at this point. Ponium. Make sure we get plenty of public order for that province. Yeah, yeah. It's right here, too, at the civil settlement. Okay. So our fleet retook C Day. Uh, did we get any skill points? It does not appear so, so that's fine. Yeah, now the Gauls, or Galatia, I keep calling them Gauls. They are kind of like Gauls. Uh, now they're trapped. And that is good news. So we have them trapped. Got my movement points here. And there's really. I need to move up to the border here and get ready to attack Persephone here. Souza is going to be very upset. Do some conversions here over to our our buildings. Did we raise Souza? I don't remember if I raised it. If I I didn't because the buildings were there. So, but I don't remember. I need to look at the. Yeah, okay, it was mostly Eastern. Yeah, we should have raised it, so that was a mistake on my part. I'll do this. I'll at Persephone if it's mostly Eastern. We'll try and do the same thing. So I will look at that and see what we can do um, on the next one. So I, I made a mistake by not raising that. Okay, so here comes the forced suicide attacks by the Galatians. And this should finally force the extinction of their family and their faction. Everything that's left now, they just they don't have access to a settlement that they can actually conquer, I don't think. My lord, we should no. No, you cannot have a peace treaty, sorry. Your territory is now mine. Shouldn't have been fighting like this. But Bactri is growing ever stronger, and I'm going to need Antiochus to head that way. I do believe Galatia is now defeated. And I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give my other allies uh, war coordination targets. Okay, so Galatia is gone. We completed a chapter. We got the Oracle at Delphi, which is gonna give us extra public order. Some nice wealth gains. So let's look at these new, newly retaken settlements and try and get them appropriately refashioned. Yeah, we can add a building at Antioch, though I don't need it at the moment. I do want the satrap stables built here. Um, let's be careful with buildings, though, because there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that'll be very necessary for me to build, and some that is less necessary for me to build. How bad is Moreau going to be upset if I move down here? Not, not crazy bad. Public order. Definitely want to make some improvements here. I'm actually going to... I shouldn't have built that either. I'm going to put the yellow building tree in there because I get better better income, but can still get the public order. It's kind of like what I'm doing right there. Not perceptively, we can put it under siege. They have an army here outside of the city, and all their forces will have to come out and fight against us. So let's go ahead and fight this. This will be a good place to end the episode. With hopefully another astounding victory here and putting even more territory under our control. And then, like I said, Antiochus can now head into the Satrapy Wars. And I'm going to have him settle the Satrapy Wars while Hannibal continues to... Like, so, Antiochus is going to be in charge of cementing Alexander's previous legacy in the east, and Hannibal is going to be in charge of establishing we that new legacy the in the west. Now, there will be others who will eventually help him, but for now, uh, Hannibal is leading that effort solo. And it's not to say that Antiochus may not eventually join him. Very well might. 
depending on what we decide to do. But right now, Bactria is uh, in kind of a uprising. They need to be dealt with. Okay. Put some cavalry on both flanks. Slight moves there. Okay, hard group. Let's go attack our enemies. I don't know where they're deployed at, so let's move forward and try and get some line of sight because there are parts Enemy of the battlefield we just don't have vision of. Okay, they deployed... Reinforcements. I'm guessing they have an army deployed kind of in the middle here, and the reinforcements are approaching, maybe, from different positions. I'm not 100% certain. Can't figure out what they've done here. I'm just going to fall back and get into a safe deployment, so that way I don't end up having AI suicide charges on my troops before I'm ready to fight. So let's just, like I said, I'm going to fall back to this position, let my troops get their stamina back, and then do a better job moving forward this time. Because that time I was worried I was going to end up with troops on both sides of me. I don't think we would have lost the battle. I don't really want to take a ton of losses and spend a bunch of turns replenishing when we could be fighting. My Persian hoplites are still regaining their stamina. They are tired from running around. Now the enemy should be getting tired from running around as well. There we go. Let's walk forward. Nice leisurely stroll here for the troops so that they don't get tired. Be at peak fighting capability. We're just going to walk. Keep the fast forward on. So the AI is moving into position. My army is now moving into position. We'll just face each other headlong. AI thinks that they can stand off from me. And they do have a pretty decent range component. Possibly even better than mine. Go ahead and run my men forward. I park just outside of missile range here. do is try and do some focus fire. They got Eastern Slingers. I got an idea. I'm going to fast forward for a second while I implement the idea. I'm going to bring some skirmishers to this and I'm going to focus fire enemy skirmisher units. Make sure to keep infantry support and cavalry support nearby. Okay, so see, now I'm going to get a focus fire on these eastern slingers. I'm going to try and gain an advantage. They're going to get a little bit of a focus here on me. I'm just hoping mine is better. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going four to one, and I think they're only a couple to one. Their Eastern Slinger unit has been almost completely invalidated, but I've taken heavy losses on mine too. Alright, that unit is basically toast, so pick the next target. And we're gonna now go for the next Eastern Slinger unit, so... <clears throat> we're definitely taking some casualties, but that focus fire was pretty good. The men are wavering basically invalidated one of their skirmishers. However, I'm now taking pretty decent losses. Back, back. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shame. Okay, we're not really gaining any advantage. All right, so Phalanx charge. Support infantry, heavy cavalry. Up. 
to let my skirmishers keep firing, but we're no longer really gaining much of an advantage. If, uh, none, actually, I would say. I'm gonna say not much of an advantage. There is no advantage to us continuing the skirmish. So, what we need to do is crush the enemy infantry. I'm gonna put my pikes down. I'm going to order my troops to move forward slowly with their pikes down. Go attack the enemy mobs here. Begin an attack on this flank. Move my cavalry to surround. While continuing to keep up pressure. So they're going to continue to walk forward. Our hillmen are probably going to get a little bit overwhelmed. charge on these eastern spears. Our general is under attack. Yes, he is. Ooh, we're going to catch those horse skirmishers a little. The enemy has a pike unit here. I'm going to crush it. Alright, Citizen Cav, just ignore their cavalry because we can't catch it. This is pointless, but go ahead and spread out. Absorb their javelins. I'm gonna let my Persian hoplites absorb some of the javelins off those horse skirmishers. They got another pikeman here. I'm gonna hit it at point blank range with my skirmishers. Should be able to whittle it down extremely quick. Take my citizen cab to face down those units, and I'm gonna bring my cataphract general in for a bit of a brutal charge here. We're gonna do inspire, trample, and let's get charged into the back of these guys. So we gotta hurry that. Unit repositioned a little, unfortunately. There's the charge. That should absolutely crush that pike unit. Yep. Rest in pepperonis. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shameful right, So our skirmishers have done some of their job. We got caught by an eastern spearman back here, taking unnecessary losses with their cavalry. Our general cleaned up some kills in that fight. By your command. Your orders. Citizen cavalry. Melee cavalry ready. Hillmen. Stick and double time. There we go. I don't want those horse skirmishers getting shots at me. I think I have absorbed most of their ammunition. Yep, now they're charging into melee. Our men flee the field of battle. This is a shame. There we go. What are your orders? Got the pikes. Our general racked up another hundred or so kills. All right, so it wasn't perfect, but it was good. We won big time. We won comfortably. So, solid victory here. I'm going to, I'm gonna kill the captives just to make sure none of them get back in a fight with us on the next turn. I'm afraid we cannot. At your command. If I auto resolve this, I'm going to lose pikemen, and we can't have that. So I am going to continue the siege, and I'm gonna call it good for this episode. I feel like we have accomplished a lot indeed. I feel like we are making solid progress across the board. 
and it's time for us to probably go ahead and, and call it on this one. I do appreciate everybody who's been watching and supporting. Please continue to do so. It helps a ton. We're making a big difference to my channel. By making a big difference to the channel, it means you're going to get more content you like. And uh, it's for multiple reasons, because when we bring in new people, it just makes it more and more, you know, uh, important for me to bring out this content when more and more people want to watch it. Um, so I very much appreciate uh, the support from you all and, and can only ask to uh, please help keep it coming and we will be uh, having more and more fun in this campaign i will see you soon thank you very much air of carthage signing out for now